Okay, hello guys. Over to Zachary here, and this is the Dev Mister's YouTube channel. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can upload a Django project successfully on Vosa. So this is a basic Django project which I have set up. It has only one single app, a web app, with a single view that is outputting this response. This response, example, project on Vosa. Okay, example. Django project on Vosso. Okay, let me run the server so that you guys can see the output. Okay, so this is this place. As you can see, it's working fine. So, the steps to follow for you to be able to upload the project on Vosso, I wrote a post about it, and you can find that post at the dev masters web page which is at www.devmasters.com slash blog i will leave a link down to the direct post in the description below but if you are following this video you can just go to the dev masters blog page and search for django Result that comes up, look for how to deploy a Django project with static files on Versa. You can wait to take it to the post. So as you can see from the first step, okay, here for you to note, for you to be able to deploy it successfully without error on Versa, you, you can use the DB SQLite database that comes with uh, Python, the one that you'll be using with Django by default, you have to switch to another database. Either you are going to use MySQL or you use Postgres. Okay, but let's say, for example, you just want to deploy your project quickly, you don't want to set up the database yet, you can also still do that. So, first things first, in Project Root Directory, create a new file and emit builds underscore files dot sh okay so let me just copy this go to your project root directory let me close all this up that is here create a new file and name it paste that name that we copied okay create the file go back to the page copy this right here come back paste it inside function of this is that this one this is what will run at build time on also so this first line here it ensures that it installs all our packages which are specified in our requirements.txt file well this one ensures that we run collect static at build time this is necessary if you plan to use the admin page that's the admin dashboard page that is generated by default for you with django if you don't do this you will not be able to use you will be able to use it but you don't have any styles to just look weird and awkward okay so go back to the page again the next step is to create a vessel.json file in your root directory as well new file vessel.json like so and then you go back copy everything inside exactly the way it is okay copy it then you paste it inside of the vessel.json file ensure one thing that you have to note is that this project name here this place ensure to replace it with the name of your actual project so as you can see in this in mine i named my project okay project so just ensure to rename it so that the name matches your project name let me see you name it here this place we are specifying our python version so we are going to be using python 3.9 this one will allow that builds files.sh which we created to run at build time okay and then you also change the name here project okay saved i think that's it all right so go back now the next line 
is to go to your settings.py and paste in this code right here. This is to allow Django to know the location of your static files at build time. It's going to copy it into this new directory which we are specifying static root, which is static files build. So go to your settings.py scroll down under static here right here you just paste it in like this okay you might show this here you just click on import os to import os for you at the top if yours doesn't show up like that you can just import it here Import OS. okay to go back down for the next step like i said you can use the default db sqlite database so for now, I'm not going to set up a Postgres database. I'm just going to comment it out like so. So you go back, scroll down to your database settings right here, and then you just comment it out. On Windows is control plus forward slash. You just highlight everything and do control plus forward slash to format it air uh, to comment it out. Okay, so the next step now is um, uh python minor py okay since we did not uh, create a new database we don't need to do this aspect right here if we had switched to a different database then you would do python minor py make migrations and then python minor py migrate so the next step now is to go to settings.py and add vessel to the allowed hosts like so so you just copy just copy the whole thing like this as uh, in settings.py you go up towards the top right here as you can see for now it's empty so you just replace it paste it to replace what was there before so now we are allowing a vessel dot app as a valid host name okay then the next thing now we we'll go to our projects wsgi dot py file this is created by django for you automatically now, the reason why we are doing this aspect is because when uh, you've deployed it on vessel vessel is going to be looking for a handler a app variable handler and what it's going to be looking for is app variable, not application. It's going to be looking for an app variable, not application. So if you don't do this, it's going to lead to an error. So you just paste this right here. Yes, you are referencing app variable to application. That's why you are trying to reference this to this right here. Okay, then the next step. Okay, that's that's all. That's all for the settings. Okay, now now let's try and deploy the project. So first things first, I'll go to your GitHub and create a new repository. So we call this repository Django Vessel. Okay, create repository. Then uh, you know the normal process to go through your git init to initialize. Git repository, git init. So, okay. The next step, uh, okay. You do git add. No, no, no. First things first, you have to create a git ignore. So, I have one somewhere in one of my projects. Let me see if I can get that one. Um, no, not here. Just give me a second. Let me see where is it. Okay, I think it's here. I will get ignore already. So I'm sure you have one already. So you just use yours. So let me just get my right here. Copy it. Okay, then go back to your project. Create the git ignore file. Let's git ignore. 
like so and paste in paste it inside okay and paste it inside successfully I now the next thing is git add space dot to add okay then git status alright now git commit dash m first commit okay then we do git wait let's go back to the repository we add the branch we create a branch a new branch and then the repository so it's going to be right here just paste it in hit push okay then for it to know if it has worked you just refresh your repo and as you can see our codes are here okay our codes are here so now next aspect now is to go to buster i've already connected my uh github to also so you just create a new project as you can see i've already connected it so it shows all the repos that are available in my github so this is the one that we just created and you just click import leave it in okay you can leave the name as it is or if you want you can change it uh, you leave everything as the way it is you do not set up any environment variables or anything like that so you just click deploy okay I'm going to take uh, a second for everything to be set up oh okay okay as you can see we got an error no such file or directory requirements.txt so i forgot to set up a requirements.txt file let me set that one up quickly pip freeze Okay, so uh, pip freeze requirements dot txt create requirements dot txt file. That's what I forgot to do earlier. So okay, let's uh, commit to our repository again. Commit dash m. Maybe second. It's push yeah. okay if you check your projects it should automatically start deploying again you can see you want check your deployment check the status as you can see it's working, everything is going on fine. It's almost done. It's done done actually. And if you go to the link that uh, Vessel provides for you, it's right here. As you can see, it's working fine. And if you check the admin panel, as you can see, it has its styles, so it deploys it along with its styles meaning that what we specified in the builds uh build files dot sh file okay what am i saying i was i'm sorry what was the name again yeah build files dot sh actually works so it what it did was it installed all we specified in our requirements dot txt and then it ran call it static that's why the styles are available in the admin panel.
okay so that's been the video has been this video this if you have any question regarding the video like maybe if you run into any errors following the steps you can leave a comment down below and i'll reply to you as soon as i can thanks for watching